So depending on how long you have been using a flutter flow for, you may have come across loops or there is a need to use some kind of loop mechanism in your own flutter flow project. Now a loop is just a very simple way of iterating over some actions with inside a flutter flow until a particular condition is met. And in this particular video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples that you can then take away and apply the same technique in your own applications. Okay, so on screen at the moment is a very, very simple flutter flow application with some basic widgets set up. There's nothing special going on at all, but I'm just going to point out this particular one here, the fruit column. Now, this is really just a column that has got some dynamic children set against it, and that is a page state variable. So what I've got up here is I've got the dynamic children set up here, which is fruit, and this is mapped to a particular uh, page state variable called a display list, which is empty at this moment in time. If I move back over to my home page and I move to the page state variables, you can see here I've got two lists. I've got the display list here, which is the empty one I just mentioned, and I've got this one called fruits list. The fruits list has got a list of a number of different kind of fruits here. There's about 18 of them. Now the objective in this particular video is to show you some samples of moving data from the fruits list into the display list. And that display list will then be reflected here with the changes that we're gonna make. And we're gonna activate all of those changes by using these three buttons here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out the logic in these particular buttons to do exactly what we're asking the buttons to actually do. Okay, so to work with our loops, I'm gonna create some page state variables. Now the first variable I'm going to create is one to track the total number of items that is in our fruits list. This is the amount of times that we're going to need to iterate over our loop. So I'm going to just going to call this one uh, total here and I'm going to give this a type of integer and I'm going to take off the nullable and I'm going to set this to be zero and the reason why I'm putting an initial field value in there because it allows me inside Flutterflow so when I'm manipulating the page state I can then select reset as an option and I will set it back to zero so hit confirm now I need to create another page state variable this one is going to be called current which will uh, track the position that we are with inside our loop so as we iterate over our loop, we get that we're going to increase this particular account by one. So let's just choose the type here, choose integer. I'm going to take off the nullable again, and I'm going to set this back to zero and just hit the confirm here at the bottom. So that is the page state variables all set up. We can now move into the logic. Um, we can now start implementing that with inside this first button here. Okay, so let's choose our all fruits button here, move over to the action flow editor, hit open, and now we can create our first action, which is gonna be kind of resetting the page state variables in this particular example. We're gonna kind of make sure that every time we hit this button, we reset the UI back to how we would like it, and then we can then add the loop. So just choose add action here, just go to the state. So just gonna do a search for state, and I'm gonna update the page state variables. Choose the add field here. Now the first one I'm gonna set is the total. I'm just gonna simply choose reset, and then choose add field here, and I'm gonna choose the current, and I'm gonna do reset again. And for remember, we set that default value to be zero so it's going to reset it back to zero and I'm going to go to the add field again and I'm going to choose our display list this is the list that we're going to build with inside this loop I'm also going to reset that back as well so that will kind of remove everything from within inside it Okay, so next up, we're gonna add the most important part here, and that is our loop. So hit the plus here, choose add loop. Now, the loop is gonna work by matching a particular condition. The loop is gonna kind of work its way around until a particular condition has been met. Then when that condition is met, the loop will then break. Let's now set that condition up using those page state variables that we created earlier. So let's move over to conditions here, choose a single condition, and the first value that we're gonna choose is our page state variable called a current. Now, this is what's going to track where the, the position we are with inside this particular loop. Now, what we're going to do in this particular loop is we're going to increase this by one every time the loop goes round until it hits a particular condition. So choose confirm here. We're going to say all the time that our loop is less than the total number of items in our fruits list, then just keep iterating. So just choose the value here, go to the page state variable. We're going to go to the fruits list. And with the fruits list, we're going to capture the number of items. So choose the number of items. So let's say we've got 18 items. We know that this page state variable is going to be loaded with that particular number of entries. So just hit confirm. 
So that's the kind of the, uh, the actual condition that's set in place. We can now start working with what we basically need to do at this particular point in time with inside our loop. So what, what the idea of this particular sample is to move uh, a number of fruits from one list to the other. So I'm just gonna choose our page state variable here. I'm gonna move up here and I'm gonna choose the state option again. So just type in state here, update page state. I'm gonna add the fields here. Now what I need to do is I need to um, load a fruit, a, uh, a the first fruit in my list because it's the first point in the entry of the actual loop. And of course I'm gonna move one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna choose the display list and I'm gonna set the update type here. I'm gonna say add to list. The value to add will be the value that's coming from um, the, uh, the correct position within inside our fruits list. So just choose the page state variable, choose the fruits list here. Now the available options here, we need to check, we need to select this. We are gonna say the item at index. Now the index position will be a specific index. And where is the index gonna come from? Well, of course it's gonna come from our current uh, sort of page state variable. So just select that and say page state variable, and we're gonna say uh, current like that. Now, if you've been uh, a programmer or if you've worked with programming, you'll kind of know that lists are kind of zero index based. Now what that means is if you've got 18 items in there, the first item will start at zero and the last item will be 17. So we're always going to pick the first one up, which is going to be zero in our case. So it's okay to handle that. So we can just hit confirm here. We've kind of got all of that wired up. We are now going to capture the very, very first fruit if this is our first iteration. And we're now going to place that with inside the display list. But what, of course, we need to do with inside this loop, we need to then increase the current uh, kind of value in our page state variable by one each time the loop runs. So just hit plus here, go to add action, do a search for state here, and we're going to update the page state. And very conveniently, uh, in Flutterflow, we can do this really simply by just choosing the current here and go to select update type. And you can see we've got this increment decrement. Now I'm going to keep this as one because I'm just going to go um, one every time that our loop iterates, but it is as simple as that. So I can now hit close now, and I'm gonna fire this up now, I'm gonna show you this hopefully working okay that we haven't made any mistakes. Okay, so here we are then in a local run, hit the all fruits button, and there we go, we have all of the fruits that's moved from one list to the other. Let's move on to our next example, which is the starts with. Okay, in our next example, we're gonna pull out all of the fruits that begin with B. So we can use a code expression in this particular example. So if you've not used code expressions before, then do stick around. But firstly, we're gonna to go to the all fruits button here. We're gonna click open. We're gonna copy this particular action chain because we're gonna reuse this now with inside the starts with. So with that selected, move to the action flow editor. Let's paste all of those actions in here. So what I'm now gonna do now is add a brand new conditional block. So just hit the plus here, choose add conditional. And I'm just gonna close that down for a second because what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this one here. I'm gonna cut this particular action and I'm just gonna paste that in here. I'm gonna come back to that very, very shortly. Let's move back here. Let's now start working on this conditional. So let's choose the conditional action. I'm gonna move down here to then the code expression. Now this code expression is gonna return back to me a kind of true or false. It's a Boolean expression. Now I'm gonna choose the add argument because what I need to do is I now need to pass in the first fruit with inside the loop. I'm gonna to check to see if it starts with B. If it doesn't, then clearly I'm just gonna return back a false. But if it's true, then I'm gonna to wanna to add that to my list. So I'm just gonna choose this option here. I'm gonna give my kind of my argument a name. This is the value that we're gonna pass in, which is gonna be the fruit name itself. Now the value, which is gonna be very similar to what we did before. We're gonna to go to the page state variable. We're gonna to go to the fruits list. We're gonna to go to available options. We're gonna say item at the index, choose the list index option. It's gonna be specific index. And of course, this is gonna be our current page state variable. This is the position that we currently are within inside our actual list itself. So hit confirm. And then we now need to move down here to then this particular expression. Now, um, if you've done any kind of research for inside a kind of uh, sort of flutter itself, you're gonna kind of know here that we can actually put kind of like a code expression in here. And I kind of encourage you to kind of Google different types of kind of expressions that you can use here. I'm gonna use a string expression here. So what I've got here is I'm just gonna reference my fruit name just up here. So this is the fruit variable that we're kind of creating here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna gain access to it by typing in fruit. 
Now, with inside uh, Flutter itself, inside the kind of Dart language, you have something that's called starts with. And I'm just going to open that up there with a uh, kind of an opening bracket, hit a single quote, and I'm just going to choose uppercase B, and then just a single quote, and then just with a closing bracket there. So I'm going to basically say that if any of my fruits start with B, then return true, otherwise you'll be returning false. So just say check errors like that. So that should go away and uh, do a quick check and then say no errors. So I think I am good here. As you can see here, it's returning type Boolean and just hit confirm. Now I have that code expression in place. It's gonna come down here. It's gonna do that check. If it starts with B, it's gonna go down here. If it doesn't start with B, it's just gonna ignore it and then carry on and then work in the next iteration. So of course I've moved this page state variable down here. Now this is, we don't need to make any changes to this because we're just adding the uh, current kind of loop item actually into the list itself. So that's all good. So we just hit close. We can quickly flip to the run mode and let's quickly see if that's working. Okay, so here we are then back in the run mode. Let's hit the starts with, and there we go. We can see all of our four fruits that begin with B. And you can see as well that we've cleared down the, the fruits that we had from our previous run, because of course, at the beginning of our action, we are resetting all of those page state variables. So that's all running. So let's now move into our third example where we are gonna work in our loop in a slightly different way, but in kind of reverse. Okay, so as we did before, go to the all fruits button here, go to the actions and let's just copy this here. We're gonna reuse all of these, copy the action chain, hit close, go to reverse, move over to the actions open and then let's just paste those actions in there. So because we're gonna work in reverse, we're gonna bring a kind of a completely different order to our display list. What we need to do is we need to create a code expression up on the update page state because what we need to do is we need to identify how many items do we actually have in our fruits list. We then need to set current as that number of items. But of course we need to kind of minus one because as I said before, a few minutes ago, um, everything with inside um, Flutter flow and um, in probably most programming language is that lists begin with zero. So we need to remove one off the total number. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another code expression to set that value for us. So just with the current option here, what we're going to do is we're now going to, instead of resetting the value, what we're going to do is we're going to set the value. So just choose set value, go to value to set. We're just going to scroll down here and we're going to choose a code expression. So choose add argument here, just select this. I'm just gonna call this items like that. Now the type is gonna be then an integer here and we're gonna choose the value. So I'll go to value and what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the page state variable, we're gonna go to the fruits list and we're gonna get the total number of items in that list and just hit confirm. Once we've got that, we can then take our items down into our expression. And quite simply, all we need to do is to say items and then we're gonna say minus one like that. So we're just gonna take one off of that, check for errors. So as you know, we've got 18 items. So what this will happen, this what this will basically do is it will set the first current uh, sort of value to then be 17. And we're gonna work all the way down to then the zero. So just hit confirm like that. That is our page state variables all set up. So next, what we need to do is we need to change our condition that we've got here in our loop. So just with the one that we've got selected, just choose that here. Let's make some changes here. So I'm just gonna expand those out here just so we can get a little bit more room here. Right, now everything in current is absolutely fine, but what we need to do is we need to change this particular one here. So we need to say the actual option is gonna be greater than or equal to, like that. And then the value that we got down here, all we need to do is just clear that, so just remove it and put zero zero like that. So this is going to start at 17, 16, 15, 14, etc. It's always going to run this loop while everything is greater than or equal to then zero. But as soon as it equals zero, then our loop will then terminate. So we'll kind of get the, the very, very last item from our list here when it hits zero. But anything less than that, we'll move into negative territory and our loop will be broken at that particular point. So just hit confirm, and then that is all that we actually need to do. So we're now gonna, um, oh sorry, there's one more thing we got need to do actually, which is really, really important, and that's on the final update page state, because what we need to do is we need to select this, instead of incrementing, we then need to uh, sort of decrement. We need to remove a one off. So like I said, we're gonna start with 17, and this is gonna send it to 16, and then of course then 15, 14, and so forth. Right the way down to zero and then of course then the loop will break so that's it all we need to do now is close this we can do our final test in our application we should see all of our fruits in reverse order 
Okay, so back in local run, let's hit the reverse option. And there we go, all of our fruits are now in reverse order. If you recall, the apples was at the start. If we go to all fruits here, you can see there it is with then grapes at the bottom. So you can see we've got everything there perfectly set in reverse order. Please come and join the Digital Pros Private No-Code Academy. The link is in the description.